Modeling is one of the most fundamental aspects of most 3D applications. Without a character, there can be no animation. Without an environment, there is nothing to light or texture. For many projects, geometry modeling is the starting point, the thing that has to be done first. In applications such as 3ds Max, there are of course a number of approaches and techniques that can be used to create the needed geometry for a scene. One possible approach is to make good use of the geometry primitives available as a foundation, a starting point, if you like, from which to build a much more complex object. In this workflow, a simple box can become the highly detailed face of a character, being modified and edited by the artist until it produces exactly what is needed for the project. Before we begin trying to turn our primitives into something more complex, however, it would probably be a good idea to become familiar with just how we create and work with them in their primitive form. The best way we can do this is by walking through the creation of a very simple chest of drawers using only primitives. This visual demonstration of how primitives work will give us a solid grounding and should give us what we need to make good use of all the primitive types available in 3ds Max. To follow along, open the scene file primitives.max from the working files folder. As all geometry primitives are accessed from inside the create tab in the command panel, that is the place we will make our start. To begin, let's select the box option from the choices available and then left mouse click and drag in our camera viewport to create the base. The initial size doesn't really matter as we can very easily edit the parameters of a primitive after its creation. Once the initial drag is complete, we can release the left mouse button and then drag the mouse again to set the height of our primitive object. And then a final single click locks everything into place for us. Once we have that created, we can right click in the view to exit out of creation mode for the box primitive. Otherwise, the next click and drag operation would start to create yet another box. To edit the parameters of our newly created primitive, we can jump over to the modify tab by clicking on it. From here, we still have access to the base parameters controlling the look of our primitive object. These can, of course, now be tweaked to set our primitive up in any configuration that we like. I want to set the length value to 55 centimeters, the width to 4 centimeters, and the height to 80 centimeters. If our box is slightly outside our view, we can use our move tool to reposition it or simply pan our camera view using our middle mouse button. As this box is going to serve as the side panel of our drawers, let's give it the suitably descriptive name of geo underscore panel underscore side. This will make working with it as we move along in our project so much easier. Jumping back into the create panel, let's click the box option again. But before creating anything, we this time want to enable the auto grid function that is available for the creation of any object in 3ds Max. This allows us to essentially use another piece of geometry in the scene as a creation grid, meaning we can select the location our object is to be created at based on the orientation of the face normal of a second object. If that doesn't really make any sense to you, don't worry. As soon as you see Autogrid at work, it will all become clear. With Autogrid enabled, let's place our cursor near the top left corner on the inside face of our side panel. And then start a click and drag operation. After we release our left mouse button, we can drag to set the height and single click to finalize the creation of our box. What we want to create here is a long thin box that will act as the front of our drawer. Once it is in place, before we right click to exit create mode, we can modify our object's parameters without going into the modify tab. Let's set the length parameter to 15 centimeters, the width to 2.5 centimeters, and the height to 55 centimeters. Let's then right click to end the creation process and move our box into place with the move tool. Once it is in place, let's rename the box to geo underscore draw underscore front. To create some quick copies of our draw front, with the move tool enabled, we want to hold down the shift key. Then we can click and move the geometry down on the Z axis by about 15 to 16 centimeters. And we can see the distance move in our axis fields down at the bottom of the UI. 
After releasing our mouse button, in the clone dialog box that appears, let's set the object to instance and the number of copies to 3. Obviously, we are only creating facades here, but if these drawers were going to be animated opening, we would need to model the drawers as a complete object. To finalize our cloning operation, let's click the OK button. We now need to create a long thin box that will serve as the top of our set of drawers. First, we need to access our four viewport setup, so let's press the Alt and W keys to minimize the camera view, and then middle mouse click and pan in the top view to make it active and to get a better view of our scene. Now we can jump back into the Create tab, select the box option, and then in the top viewport, click and drag to create a box of any size. Once created, we can jump into the Modify tab and set the length value to 58 centimeters, the width to 70 centimeters and the height to 3.5 centimeters. This gives us a top to our drawers that has a little bit of an overhang on each side. Let's select the camera view by middle mouse clicking in it and then hit the Alt and W keys to maximize. Then clicking the Align tool, we will select our first draw facade. As we want to center our box, we will make sure the X position is checked and that the center to center options are being used. To make sure our box is also near the top of our drawers, we want to make sure there is a check in the Z position, and then to center it, we will uncheck the Y position. After we click OK, we will now move our draw top and position it a little more appropriately. As we only have one side to our drawers at this moment in time, let's select the side we do have, and then holding down the Shift key, we can click and drag on the X axis to create an instance over on the other side. Back in the Create tab, let's now click the Cylinder option. Again, we want Auto Grid enabled, and then we can click and drag on one of the draw fronts. As with the box primitive, after the initial click and drag operation is complete, we just release the mouse button, and then set the height simply by dragging with the mouse and left clicking to lock everything in place once we have it at the desired height. Now, don't forget to right click to exit Create mode. With Auto Grid still enabled, we can create a sphere to serve as a simple handle. First, select the Sphere option from our Create tab, and then we can click and drag to create a sphere on the front of our drawers, and right click to end the creation process. With the sphere still selected, let's click the Align tool, and then click on our cylinder object. Making sure the Center to Center options are selected, and that there is a check in the X, Y, and Z coordinates, we will click OK. Now all we need to do is move our sphere forward so it sits at the end of our cylinder. If we need to, we can come over to the Modify tab and make any subtle adjustments to the size of our sphere if we think it could look a little better. For our next move, we need to make sure both the cylinder and sphere objects are selected. So let's hold down the Control key and left click the cylinder object. Pressing and holding the Shift key, we can now click and drag on the X axis of the selection to create a copy of the handle, placing it on the opposite side of the draw. Again, we want to create these objects as instances. As we want two handles on each of the drawers, let's hold the Control key once again and select all of the handle elements. Then release the Control key and hold the Shift key. Now we can click and drag in the Z axis to copy our handle down onto the other draw fronts. Once the Clone Options dialog appears, we can set the number of instances to 3 and click OK. Although very simple in form, we now have a perfect set of building blocks that can be refined and detailed in order to produce a much more realistic final model. Creating and using primitives in 3ds Max is quick, easy and a very powerful modeling workflow. And although we have only made use of three primitive types in this video, we have in fact covered the basic working methodology for all 3ds Max primitives, as they all share a quick, easy, and very intuitive workflow.